Erin and Marie from Lalaman Brewing who are going to share their extensive knowledge with us today. Dan, can you please introduce yourself, who you are, where you work, you know, what's your favourite beer style and um, what's your favourite yeast? Dan, I am the technical manager for Asia Pacific for, for Lalimon, so it's a, it's a big region to cover. Um, I've been with the company for about a year and a half now. Um, I guess my favourite uh, yeast or beer is probably whatever I'm going to be brewing next, and that would probably be a Kolsch uh, down the road at my local brewery, uh, Eden. Um, so I'm looking forward to hopefully be able to, uh, to, to brew down there soon. My name's Erin. I am uh, the technical manager for Rocky Mountain region in, in the U.S., and uh, the homebrew coordinator, business coordinator for North America. Uh, I've been with the company for about a year and a half. Favorite beer style, that's a tough one. Uh, I love a lot of them, <laughs> what's in my hand. But uh, in terms of uh, favorite yeast, actually I'm drinking right now um, a Saison that was made with our Belle Saison. We love that yeast. And so uh, I'd say, you know, that's a good one. We keep, we keep remaking it over and over. Yeah, hello everybody. So my name is Marie. Uh, I'm based in France, as you can hear, maybe. Uh, I've been working for L'Allemand for 10 year, uh, 12, 12 years, actually. Uh, three years in Europe as a homebrew uh, sales manager for coordinating uh, the homebrew business in Europe. But before that, I was in Canada, uh, also for L'Allemand. Um, okay, uh, so my favorite yeast used to be the Belle Saison. Uh, I've been brewing with it uh, uh, so convenient, even if you live in an apartment, because of this uh, is uh, temperature tolerance. Uh, but as I can uh, guess, it's not yet, but uh, uh, as I like a lot sour beer, I think I may really love our new yeast, which is the Philly Sour, uh, because it's a yeast that can and produce also acid lactic when fermenting, so it's very, very convenient for home brewing. Uh, you, can, you don't need the bacteria, so I think fifth sour is going to be like my uh, next to uh, yeast. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm enjoying a, a porter today, uh, which was brewed with your wonderful tea for me. morning. Yeah, <laughs> tea. Well, it's early in the morning for you. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I love all beer styles like you guys, but um, especially a big fan of IPA, um, done well. and. Um, Probably my favourite yeast in the in the Lalaman range is Nottingham, because I find it so reliable. But I must say, our customers are loving your new uh, Voskovic strain. It's it's already probably our number one selling best yeast um, through the shop. So such a versatile strain. I just wanted to ask you all a few common questions that we get from our customers. Um, the first one, I guess, is pitching rates. How many grams per litre of wort would you recommend? for a lalum and yeast? So we have, for the most part, it's uh, 50 to 100 grams per liter. The only difference between the pitching rate with most of our yeast strains would be the diamond, the comb, uh, the comb and the uh, New England have a, high, a slightly higher pitch rate. It's uh, basically double, um, so 23 grams per hectoliters. I'm used to working with gallons, I apologize. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. If you mention five gallons, we will we will understand that's like 19 liters or, or 20 liters. Basically, you know, one sachet, 11 gram sachet per five gallons. Um, yeah. And with the New England, the diamond and the coal, or coal um, yeah. we use uh, double that. Yeah, that was what I was going to say. Is it the same for an ale as it is for a lager and, and sort of when do you think in terms of the gravity um, that you should be pitching more? Well, what the only uh, yeast strain that we have as a, as a proper lager yeast is the diamond. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so we, it is uh, basically the same pitch rate, uh, the higher pitch rate, the, yeah. um, the 22 grams per five, five gallons. So. And there is a nice uh, calculator on our website uh, where you oh, can enter you. the gravity uh, of your wort, uh, the name of the yeast and the volume you want to make, and it's going to give you the number of grams you need. And this is uh, this is very useful because for dry yeast, you really need to adjust uh, 
uh, with, uh, with uh, what we have uh, been calculating in terms of uh, cells per gram. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a good tool. That probably leads us nicely into the next question we had here, which is we commonly get a question around fermentation, something like my beer has stalled at, I don't know, 10.30 or 10.25 or 10.21 doesn't appear to be moving for days and it should go down to say 10.15 or 10.12 or 10.10. What tips and tricks do you recommend to home brewers to unstick a stuck fermentation? Uh, actually there are many reasons for having a stuck fermentation and what we have uh, seen is that uh, it can be linked for example to the uh, viability of the yeast, uh, of uh, under pitching uh, like uh, you said just before, uh, the temperature, it can be a contamination, many reasons for that. So uh, actually uh, what we have been recommending is that uh, when you have a stuck fermentation, uh, it's to add a, a new yeast. Uh, so we always advise to have a Nottingham as a backup yeast in your fridge. So having mm -hmm. like a, uh, if you are a home brewer, having a, a one, two uh, sachet of Nottingham, anyway, the shelf life is, uh, is very long. So in your fridge, you keep it for this kind of uh, situation. Uh, Nottingham is very uh, good for that, uh, thanks to the fact that it can ferment from 10 C. So when, uh, for example, you have a cold night and uh, nothing happening in the morning, it can happen. I mean, uh, I live in uh, altitude, so it can be cold during the night. And uh, yeah. uh, so it has stopped and you can't really, uh, it can't go again. So you really need to add the Nottingham uh, and it's going, hopefully, it has saved many, uh, many bowls. Yeah. So this is one of the tips uh, we advise to, 